Hey, Ninth and O. This is Michael Knight, one of the pastoral interns here at Ninth and O. And welcome to Devotionables, brief devotions for busy people. We're continuing today in hymns with the common glory known as the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Written by Thomas Ken uh, at an unknown year, but it was included in 19, or excuse me, in 1674 in his morning, evening, and midnight hymns. And it is potentially uh, a stanza from Awake My Soul and With the Sun, and also Glory to Thee, My God, This Night. And so that being said, uh, Thomas Ken has a very interesting uh, past and history. He had run-ins with three different kings and, and ultimately that led to his ordination as a bishop removed by the final king. But one of the kings uh, in whom he uh, had run-ins with, it was actually imprisoned him on his deathbed, actually said he would love to hear uh, Thomas Ken tell him of his wrongs and that many bishops said there were few more faithful uh, than Thomas Ken. So I love him. If you want to read about his, his past and about the run-ins he had with the various kings, I love his faithfulness. And, and uh, anyway, nonetheless, as we look at this hymn, be reminded of the praise to God that no doubt Ken, that Ken had. Uh, it, by the way, this doxology has been used in other hymns, uh, all Creatures of Our God and King by Francis Assisi. And Now we th- now Think We All Are God by Catherine Weakworth. It's, the most interesting thing is the fact that there's literally only four verses, and, or, or four lines, I should say. And in these four lines, there's a lot of rich Trinitarian structure. Uh, and that is in the first line, the Father being the highlight of the source of all the blessings. And the second one being the Spirit, in whom we praise God with. And the third line being uh, God the Son, who is the firstborn, do all the praise, uh, sitting on the heavenly high. And lastly, the culmination of the entire Trinity mentioned in the final line. Uh, Just such a great reminder of our Trinitarian perspective and structure in this song. And for you music savants out there, uh, Francois Hippolyte Bartholomew composed a hymn tune with this song that was supposed to help highlight uh, using various scales and descending scales uh, in order to bring and highlight the Trinitarian perspective within the hymn. So for you savants out there to want to look more into that, that's the best explanation I got for you. But um, Ken said in his hymns Morning, Evening, and Midnight, that be sure to sing the morning and evening hymn in your chamber devoutly, remembering that the psalmist upon happy experience assures you that it is a good thing to tell to the loving kindness of the Lord early in the morning and of his truth in the night season. And with the psalmist, I'm reminded of where we're at in this doxology, and that is pulling from Psalm 96, verses 11 and 12 that say, Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood rejoice. And finally, in the very last chapter of the Psalms, we see a very similar uh, rendition of, of this hymn, and that is, Praise ye the Lord, Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His firmament of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the psaltery and harp. Praise Him with the timbrel and dance. Praise Him with string instrument and organs. Praise Him upon the loud cymbals. Praise Him upon the high-sounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. What a great reminder to praise the Lord day and night in our chambers. It's, if you're like me, it's four little lines, and I was singing it this week as I was preparing for this just constantly in my mind. And so I hope this is a blessing to you, Ninth and O, and have a great week.